I'm sending you, I'm putting my words in your mouth. You just go do what I tell you to do. You go where I send you. You say what I tell you to say. Those are my words. In other words, also, if they had a problem with Paul and the things he was saying, who did they really have a problem with? God. If they have a problem with Jeremiah, and you're going to see that they did, and God forewarned him, who ultimately did they have a problem with? God, okay? Same thing with Moses and, and Aaron. When the people murmured against Moses and Aaron, who were they murmuring against? God. But God here is telling, don't say that you're a child. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you what you have to say. 8 through 10. Yes. Excellent point. So Eric said, same thing today. God doesn't call the qualified, He qualifies the called. How does He, are we called out of darkness into His marvelous light? How possibly can we present someone the words of Almighty God? By what means? By His Word. This is inspired. Same thing. We have His words right here. He has given us His complete revealed Word, perfect in every, in every sense. And it's all we need. And when we do that, when we speak the words of the Lord, if any man speak, 1 Peter chapter 4, 11, let him speak the oracles of who? God. Very simple. 2 Timothy chapter 4, preach the what? Word. Go ye into all the world and preach the what to every creature? Gospel. You see, He's given us what we need to be teaching, what we need to be preaching, what we need to be showing others that they must do in order to be right with the God of heaven. So He doesn't call the qualified, He qualifies the what. And we are called. He qualifies the call. Now, good, excellent point, Eric. Verses 8 through 10 encourages encourages Jeremiah to not be afraid. He assures Jeremiah his word was in his mouth. God said Jeremiah over nations and kingdoms. When we look at this, I want you to take note of, of verse 8. We're going to come back to verse 8 in a moment. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. There's a reason for that, and we'll get to it in just a moment. But he's already telling Jeremiah, don't say you're but a child. I'm going to give you what you have to speak. And then right on the heels of that, he says, don't, wait, don't be afraid of their faces. The people you're preaching to, the people I'm sending you to, don't be afraid of their faces. But we're going to see why he's saying that. Um, verse 9 Literally, the Lord put forth His hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Now verse, when we look at verse 9, I want you to take note of some very similar language here. 2 Samuel 23, verses 1 and 2. Now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, <clears throat> said, And the man who was raised up, on high, the anointed of God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and His word was in my what? Tongue. So when you look at Second Chronicles 36 and verse 12, this bears this out. He's telling Jeremiah here in Jeremiah chapter 1 and in verse 9, I'm putting my words in your mouth. Now look at 2 Chronicles 36. That's another one of those historical context passages. 34 through 36, considering the book of Jeremiah. In chapter 36, verse 12, And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God, and humbled not himself before Jeremiah, the prophet speaking from the mouth of the Lord. Speaking of Jeremiah prophesying to Zedekiah, and here you have 
the mind of God coming forth from the mouth of God to Jeremiah in his mouth. So from the mind of God and the mouth of God to the mouth of who? Jeremiah the prophet. These were the words of the Lord. I don't know how much clearer anyone could be than Jeremiah. He was speaking the word of the Lord to the, to, to the southern kingdom. In verse 10, I want you to take note, root out. <clears throat> Interesting, the Lord put forth his hand and touched my hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms. Now what's interesting, God is not only giving him authority to prophesy concerning the, the southern kingdom of Judah, but all, all kingdoms. And you're going to see this bore out toward the end and even middle to the end of, of the book of, of Jeremiah. Because then he begins to prophesy against who? No longer Judah, but guess who? Who took him captive? Babylon, right? Nebuchadnezzar. And, and you're going to see him having authority to do that. So here's what he's got the authority to do. To root, evil needs to be rooted out. Now we're going to hit this same chapter and verse in the body of the lesson this morning in the sermon. But to root out, to root out evil to pull down strongholds of sin, to destroy. To destroy what? Widespread sin and idolatry and murder. To throw down idolatrous altars. So he, he, he told them, I'm giving you authority. When you go preach, you preach these things. And you, you see that you do what you can do to preach my word and try to get these kings to root out, to pull down, to destroy, and to throw down. I'm giving you authority to do this, Jeremiah. Now, these are four negatives. Four negatives in preaching. How many positives? Build and to plant. Are there preachers today, and there are there people today that have itching ears, and all they want to hear is good. I don't want you to preach anything that's going to prick my heart or step on my toes. I don't, I, don't, I don't like that. When we come together, I think we need to go out and be built up each and every day. Well, that's wonderful. We do need to be built up each and every time. Can one be built up by being warned? Yes. Yeah. But you see, this is pretty good balance. This is excellent balance. This is excellent balance in the pulpit of today. We need to try as people of God and preachers need to stand behind pulpits and brood out, pull down, destroy, and throw down, and then build up and plant. Now, in the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 28, the Jeremiah of the New Testament, I want you to take note of what he says in Acts 20, 28, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. You look back, I think it's about verse 27. It's right in there somewhere where he says, I have preached unto you, I have not shunned and preached unto you the whole counsel of what? God. I've, I've preached unto you everything. And you take heed. You take heed of what I've preached. Now, I want us to look at 11 through 16. We're almost out of time. And let's read that. Jeremiah 1, 11 through 16. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I, see, I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. What you're going to take note of is now he is a seer. God has given him a vision. He's going to give him two visions here. Now, an almond tree in the Jewish mind, when, can you guess when the almond tree begins to bloom? What month? January. 
when others are still asleep, other plants, other trees are still asleep, this particular tree is called the awake tree. And so Jeremiah saw this in a vision, and pretty much, I, I better be awake. God wants me to awake. He wants Judah to awake. And God says, I'm sending you the, le- the message right now, awake. You need to be awake. Judah needs to be awake. It's time to awake. Now, as we look at the second one, 13 and following, And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot that is a, a boiling pot. And the face thereof is toward the north. Then the Lord said unto me, Out of the north, an evil shall break forth upon the inhabitants of the land. For, lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the earth, of the kingdoms of the north, rather, saith the Lord, and they shall come, set every one his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem, and against all the walls thereof round about, and against all the cities of Judah. And I will utter my judgments against them touching all their wickedness, who have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods and worshipped the works of their own hands. I'm I'm bringing an enemy from the north. Now, if you look kind of on the right, you'll see a little black square with a little star in the middle of it. That's Babylon. Babylon is mentioned several times also in the book of Jeremiah. Not just Nebuchadnezzar, but Babylon is mentioned several times. This ultimately would be the the nation that would overtake the southern kingdom of Judah. But when you look at that and you see on the left side where the Dead Sea is and you kind of see Jerusalem there, what's interesting is it's not really north, it's what? It's east, right? But all you have between the Dead Sea or Jerusalem and, and Babylon when you get on is, is desert. So what route did they take, remember? It's called the what? Fertile Crescent. The Fertile Crescent. They went around, and I guess I'll be going backwards, they went around from Babylon and came from the north. And that was the enemy from the north, ultimately, that would take them in to 70 years of bondage for all of their wickedness, for all of their idolatry. But I want you to take notice, lastly, God's protection is promised. When you look at 17, verses 17 through 19, Thou therefore gird up your loins, and arise, and speak unto them all that I command thee, be not dismayed at their faces. Now remember, that's exactly pretty much, pretty much what verse 8 says. If you look over again, be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Here in verse 17, it says, it says, Do not be dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. Don't be afraid of them. Don't be scared of them. Don't be frightened of them, unless I confound you before them. Look at verse 18. For behold, I have made thee this day a defensed city and an iron pillar and brazen walls against against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. That's pretty strong language. He's been made an iron pillar, a brazen brazen walls, No matter how mad they get with you, Jeremiah, no matter how angry and how red-faced they get, and and how no matter how many times that they point in your face, and no matter how many times they threaten you, nothing's going to happen to you. You just go and preach the words that I put in your mouth. And they shall fight, verse 19, they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. It doesn't matter what what they say, how red-faced they get, how much they fight against you. I'm with you. I've made you an iron pillar. I've made you brazen walls. 
You just stand firm. You stand fast on my word. Look at Joshua 1.5. God, speaking to His servants, says the very t same type thing. Oftentimes, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, God tells Joshua. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good what? Courage. Here's Jeremiah. Young man. He's going to go preaching. Oh, his first preaching job. There's not going to be a honeymoon phase. <laughs> There's not going to be a few years of, of really good and then so-so and then bad. Jeremiah, it's just going to be bad. You're going to start preaching and you're going to have some enemies. You're going to have some enemies right off the bat. But don't be afraid. You, even of, of the people that you know personally, there's going to be those. Look at Joshua 1, 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. That's what he told Joshua. Same idea here given in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm putting my words in your mouth. There's going to be people that fight against you. Don't you worry about them. Don't you be afraid of them. I am with you. I will give you strength. I will give you protection. You don't need to worry about them. No matter what, I am with you. Jeremiah 1.18, For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city, an iron pillar, brazen walls against the whole land. Jeremiah, I'm, I'm here to protect you. Nothing's going to happen to you. As we look at Jeremiah, very quickly, very hurriedly, how many chapters in the book of Jeremiah? 52. How many chapters in the book of Lamentations? Five. What was the first king Jeremiah prophesied to? Josiah. How old was Josiah when he began to reign? Eight years old. How old was Josiah when Jeremiah began to prophesy? Twenty-one. How many years did Josiah reign? Okay. Who was the last king of Judah that Jeremiah prophesied to? Zedekiah. Thank you for your time. We're out.